Hi everybody, I've had a few requests to continue doing the prepping video, so I'm just going to share a short video right now today. Um, Happy New Year, it's February 2024. Year started off with a bang. The weather's been up and down, hot and cold, and very changeable here in the area where I live, and that can bring a concern for how will it be when spring actually gets here and summer gets here because typically where I live there's a lot of snow in the winter a lot of snow and cold but this year we have not had that experience we haven't had a lot of snow we haven't had really any cold a few days but not what is typical for here so it's been kind of like a heat wave other parts of the nation might think of it as cold, but for us here, we're used to dressing in so many layers in the winter and have expectations of having snow days and emergency parking and all these changes. So what we have here is just like nothing. Um, in fact, I can see the ground. There is no snow outside. I can see a muddy ground. I see dead grass. I see people walking around with their jackets open a lot of the time. Maybe it's 20, 30 degrees in the morning, but by noon it's in the upper 40s, close to 50 degrees. So for here, that's not the norm. Anyway, with saying that, for those of you that were wanting me to continue on with uh, prepping videos, which I have not done any in a while, and I haven't done any cooking videos in a while, I'll start doing the cooking videos and the food dehydration videos and also the hydroponic gardening videos. Those will be coming up again soon. But I just want you to think about something. I don't know if you've noticed the types of movies and things that are coming out. And, you know, there's a new movie that's out on Netflix right now, Leave the World Behind. I haven't seen the movie. I do have the book, though. I, I prefer to read a book before I see the movie because then I can get the fullness of what the intent of the author was because movies often change things a little bit and there's usually a little glimpse of something missing or something that's being directed or presented in a little different way. Anyway, a lot of the things that I'm getting from the book so far is about uh, an apocalypse, uh, things like that, which I know there's a lot of prepper people in the prepper community that will think apocalypse and they're ready to stack their toilet paper to the ceiling and go through all that stuff that we just went through a few years ago with the C-19 and everything. Um, but what I get out of it is that whatever's coming, which there's always something coming, something is always happening. Something is always changing. Um, whatever's coming, we should try to be prepared for it. In California, they tell people to prepare by having a bug out bag, um, with all the things that they would need in, in case there is a huge earthquake so that they can grab their stuff and go. Or that's what I've been told by people that live in California. I'm not from California, never lived there. I'm in the Midwest. Um, so there's different things that people are told in different areas to prepare them for what ever would be the greater natural disaster in their area. You know, tornadoes happen. A lot of places. I prepare for tornadoes and power outages because that is a reality in the area where I live. Um, I prepare definitely for the blackouts, the power outages, by having a couple of different um, power supply sources that are not linked to the grid and having my own solar panels and those type things. I, I've done videos on those before, but if you want me to do that again, I'm willing to do that again and explain um, some budget-friendly options for getting those things together so you have what you need 
and not just have it so that you can practice and be prepared to use it because it doesn't make any sense to have something and then not really know how to use that thing that you have. So, and I'm sorry, I got my hair all <laughs> braided down today. Um, other things, you know, if the power were to go out, what happens with the water supply? Water supply is usually connected to power, you know, because they have to process and clean the impurities out of the water. Hopefully people have gone to a hardware store, camping supply place, um, and either got some water purification tablets or you purchased something like a Berkey online, or maybe you have a life straw, or maybe you want to do the old fashioned filter system where you get the three containers and you, and you're putting in the rocks and then you got the sand and, you know, doing the multiple levels, which will take a lot of things out of the water, but it doesn't get rid of those impurities or other bacteria or things. Um, I can do a video on that. If someone lists in the comment section and want me to show either how to create those systems or the good and the bad about those systems. Right now, I'm just saying that those are some things that are important to consider for whatever may come up. Because, you know, a few years ago, out of nowhere, we had this pandemic and people weren't able to go anywhere. People weren't able to do anything. A lot of pressure was put on people to make decisions one way or another. Some decisions which sometimes caused some people to lose their jobs. Um... But then what do you do? And what happens for those who end up getting sick during that process? Do they have food to eat? Because if they end up being quarantined for a longer period of time and they don't have food to eat, how are they going to manage? Who's going to bring them food? You know, I personally like having dehydrated food stored up, but I've also, you know, explained that on videos before. Uh, about um, moving into a certain area and tornado comes and knocks out all the power. Doesn't destroy my home, but it did knock out the power in my area and for quite a distance around me so that no grocery stores were open. No gas stations were even open to buy a hot dog or anything. You know, these are realities that have happened for me and if it can happen to me, it could happen to other people. But that's why I try to be prepared and have some things. Um, and Department of Homeland Security, um, if you go on their, like FEMA and, and Department of Homeland Security, they list things on their websites for how people should prepare, things people should look out for. Like the FEMA group says, be prepared for three weeks. For if a disaster hits, you know, we've had Hurricane Katrina. We've had a multiple hurricanes, but Katrina was one that was particularly devastating to a lot of people. And I personally knew people that went through that. Um, and so we have those things and we have other things that happen. And when you're not prepared, you're in panic mode. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? How am I going to eat? How am I going to have anything clean and pure to drink? Because we can go for a while without food, but not without water. Our bodies require that water for our life. You know, what are you going to do with your pets? Do you have extra things for your pets? If something should happen and trucks are not able to get through or if boats or barges are not able to bring product in because here in America lately, it seems like we rely a lot more on other nations for the things that we should be taking care of here at home. In my opinion, um, a lot of our canned goods. I don't know if you look at the canned goods, if you're in a store, <clears throat> some stores you go in, I went in one store today and there were 
so many empty shelves. And it was a store where they offer more discount products. I like to go and see what they have. They did have seeds because this is the beginning of seed season. So they did have packages of seeds for $4. So it's a good time to go out and look and see if there's anything um, that you might need that you can pick up a few items of, you know, some dried beads, some seeds, rice or whatever. But a lot of the other rows and shelves were 50 to 65% bare. They were pretty bare. Um, so if you haven't prepared, when are you going to prepare? Because the wrong time to prepare is after a crisis hits. That's just like with kidney disease. You know, I find out I have kidney disease and it's like, okay, so what do I do about it now? You know, all the doctor can do is shrug his shoulders and say, well, we just have to wait and watch until things get bad enough. And then we go down those other roads when things get bad enough. Why would I want to wait until they get bad? If I had known the potential for me getting kidney disease before I became stage three, perhaps I could have taken some preventative steps so that things didn't get to that level. But, you know, it, it's the same with being prepared for whatever circumstance comes up. Yeah, if we have uh, a national crisis or some kind of civil dispute or whatever, if anything like that happens, you need to already have a plan in place. Where would I meet up with my kids, my family, my loved ones? How would I get in contact with people? Because if the grid's down, you're not going to be able to use your phone, right? Car might not run if it's an EMP, especially if your car is electric. I'm just saying. And there's a lot more people with electric cars. And, you know, I have a regular car, but I do have um, an electric bike. But my electric bike is pedal assist. So even if the power grid was down and it didn't run, off electricity, I could still pedal it. I'd probably get really tired though, but I could pedal it. But what kind of plans do you have in place? Have you discussed those plans with your family members or your loved ones and, you know, where you would meet up, what you would do? Do you have what you need? Those are just things to think about. And I know some people will never prepare for anything until it's too late. Some people will wait till the crisis hits and they'll just say, well, I know you're always prepared for everything, so I'm going to come knock at your door. But that's just not really a good solution to want to come and knock at the door of the one that's prepared just because you chose to not prepare. So I hope people prepared one way or another. And I'm not saying that everybody has to go out and do all kinds of wild and crazy stuff. There are a lot of resources available online where you can order emergency supplies of, supplies of food and or things if you're interested in that you can order through mountain house emergency essentials um thrive there's a bunch of organizations you can order through i prefer to just get my food fresh take half of it to eat prepare and eat as I regularly do. And the other half I dehydrate and I put away so that I have it when I need it because I prefer to not have two or three weeks worth of food for an emergency. If, if you take your time and do it over time, you can store up an ample supply of food for emergency or crisis situations and have that stuff put away so you'll have what you need for your family or your friends or your loved ones or the elderly neighbor that you have that's not able to get out and get things that they need. Medication. If you're on medication, what are you going to do? 
Are you receiving three months worth at a time, like through a mail order pharmacy, or are you getting your medication once a month? Because it may make a difference in how you receive things if something comes up. Do you have a first aid kit? Do you have bandages and supplies? Do you have alcohol? Bottles of alcohol. Imagine how having that could have helped at the beginning of C-19 when everyone was trying to figure out what to do and they're trying to sanitize things and then they're running out to the stores and they're wanting to buy up all the sanitizing wipes in the stores. You know. Stores end up having to lock things up, put everything behind plastic. You, know, you can go in stores now and still see that things are locked up and put behind plastic. And that's kind of a shame, but that's the world we live in now. Laundry detergent, dish detergent, um, things that people would readily use every day are, are things that people want to do the five finger discount on and, and take out the store. Uh, so they are put on lockdown now. But if you go and get you a bottle of alcohol now and then maybe another day, you know, if you end up having a fall or something and need the alcohol to um, use for your wound or or for a cut or, or if you end up needing to use it to sanitize a spot or whatever, you at least have what you need. So oh, I think my video is going kind of long, so I will try to cut this off here soon. But I did want to mention, you know, those things and remind you to try to stay prepared the best that you can. It doesn't mean going out and spending hundreds of dollars at a time. If you take your time and spend a few bucks here and a few bucks there and prudently, wisely save up the things that you need, you know, Go to the hardware store. Get the big paint cans that have the lids that you can twist on. Um, you can fill one of those with bags of beans, another one with bags of rice, or prepackaged meals, because I know some people don't make a lot of stuff from the fresh. For me, fresh is best, but if that's not what you're comfortable with, just try to put something aside so that you have something for an event of an emergency. And you can probably go to a thrift store or look on Amazon or thriftbooks.com or some other place for low cost books on CPR, first aid, um, how to deal with different crises and emergencies. Those are good booklets. In fact, they're pretty thin. I have a few of them <laughs> right here because I study those things to be prepared. And they've helped me in times of emergency. When I've seen someone else in crisis, I knew what to do. And I was able to call 911, but actively do what needed to be done while the person on the phone is telling me, the same thing that I already knew. So that way it's more of a confirmation of what I needed to do for that person. So those things can be helpful in times of trouble or times of stress. Those things can save lives. So, so just a few things to, to think about. You know, some people say, oh, emergency comes. I've got a big deep freeze full of food. Sounds wonderful till the power goes out. And depending on how long the power goes out for you may or may not be able to use that deep freeze. You know, you'd have to keep the door closed all the time because as soon as you open it, the cold air is going to come out, which is going to allow some warm air to go in. And the things that are in there will eventually go bad. And, in the scenario where I was talking about the tornado and the storm knocking out the power in the area that I was in, um, my neighborhood was without power for a week. It was about a week. 
and I had just moved into the house that I was living in. Uh, so, you know, I had some canned goods. Most things I kept in the refrigerator and freezer. I was a very laid back. I'm going to go to the store every other day and just get stuff as I need it. That didn't work out so well. Couldn't even get <clears throat> donuts at the gas station <clears throat> because my neighbors that lived behind me beat me to the gas station. Although there was no power, the people that were in the gas station were kind of dumbfounded. Like, what do we do? Because, you know, the gas pumps won't work. Nothing will work. And my neighbors behind me went in and bought up all the donuts <laughs> and had them in a big box. And they came and knocked on my back door and said, welcome to the neighborhood. We're sharing our donuts with you. And I dealt with that. Then I had to find creative ways to cook the things that I had that were canned goods. Because some canned goods still need to be cooked. Other things you can eat cold. But I had to learn to deal with it. And that was what kind of spearheaded me into being prepared for all sorts of situations. So thanks for joining me today. I know it's been a while since I've been on here, but you know, I've, I'm trying to continue to work forward with my own health stuff and keep my CKD under control so that my numbers don't, um, become worse. Um, but at the same time, I slipped and fell at the beginning of the year and messed up my leg and I was having trouble walking, which maybe not, I wasn't happy. <laughs> I was in a lot of pain and it was depressing and it was frustrating to lose that sense of independence. Um, but I'm walking better and I'm going to start doing more videos again. And, and for anyone that's still interested in the preparedness piece, I only receive a few mess messages here and there from people that say, yes, I'm interested. And I do still have information here that I am willing to send out to people on how to prepare for a variety of things. I have binders of information that I'm willing to share. But if nobody wants it, I will not <laughs> take the time to to share all of that, but I do have quite a bit of information that I'm willing to share with anyone that's serious and interested in receiving that. But you have to let me know in the comment section below. And it also helps if you give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do feel free to subscribe and share this information with someone else that may find it useful. Um, I'm on a multi... Uh, on a variety of, of different platforms. Uh, so I'm here on YouTube. Um, and I've got, you know, my other accounts in different places. But if you Google Danette's Kitchen, you'll find me on more than one platform. Um, in fact, you'll find me on at least three platforms in that way. But on one platform, I spend more time talking about the Kidney Minute and about things people need to know about kidney disease and how changing your diet can help prolong your life. Um, it's been working for me, and I just want to be able to help other people and share with them the information that the doctors usually don't want to tell you until it's too late, you know. But it's, there are very good resources with the American Association for Kidney Patients and uh, National Kidney Foundation that were willing to share the information so that I'm able to also share it with others. So on one of my um, social media platforms, I spend a lot of time talking about the Kidney Minute. Here, I spend more time food preparation, food dehydration, and just regular prep stead and stuff. And on the third platform, um, I just started it back up again as Danette's Kitchen and, and not as my name because there was some goofy stuff going on. 
but I will be performing music on that one. You know, it's kind of ridiculous that I play so many instruments and, and yet I haven't really been playing them for anyone. So I will start at least doing classical music on guitar and clarinet, and I may do jazz or something else on um, my saxophone or eventually playing some piano or something. So there are different areas where you can get different bits of me and what I like to do. Um, I will probably also on that same one that I'll do the music on, I'll probably also um, display some of my fiber arts and some of my polymer clay work too. Just, you know, for anyone that's interested in all that. But I do have the different accounts between um, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. So hopefully you'll follow me on the different platforms. Um, if you try to contact me or message me through the TikTok, I may not see your message or I may not see it for months. I have almost 4,000 followers there. Um, don't know why I have so many there and I've been here on um, YouTube much longer, but but I have a lot of followers. But if you do respond to videos here, um, I do eventually get back to you. Sometimes it takes a while for me to get that message, but you are more likely to receive a response here than the other places. But thanks for joining me today. I hope you guys are prepared for whatever we got about to come up. I'm just telling you that <clears throat> the weather hasn't been right. And there's been a lot of things that are not right. Um, and I believe we're in for some rocky weather this summer and possible other health things coming up. So do take care of yourself. Be prepared. Have all the stuff that you need. Because at any moment in time, we don't know when more stores are closing. Because they're closing a lot lately anyway. Um, we don't know when the food supply is going to change up again like it did before. And rather than be panicked and in a daze, it's better to just be prepared so you don't have to be scared. And you can say, I got this. And if you got to hunker down and, and shelter in place for a minute, you're at least ready. Because government gives you examples of what to do, and what you need but they only tell you you need it for a little while. And the reality is if they're saying you need it for a little while, you should take that and at least multiply it times 10. <laughs> because typically things go on for a lot longer than they say. But thanks for joining me today. And I look forward to talking to you again soon.